If you follow my channel, you know that I'm passionate about computational photography and my favorite type of computational photography is HDR. To my eyes, it just gives better looking images which mimic what your eye can see. In the past year, I've tried almost every HDR editor out there and as 2020 comes to a close, I'm ready to award the top HDR editor to spend your time and hard-earned money on. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to my channel to help me make more videos. Just like my last top 5 video where I ranked the top raw photo editors in 2020, and if you want to see that video, I'll place a link in the description, I'm going to use the same brackets across all the products and compare the HDR results so you can get a true feel of its real-world performance. In terms of criteria, I'll judge it based on the following. Number one is the quality of tone mapping. Any HDR editor should produce beautiful images out of the box, which hopefully will require minimal tweaking and adjustment. Number two is ease of use. The interface should be friendly and responsive and understandable without requiring a manual. Number three is creative control. The HDR rarely looks perfect automatically, so the ability to easily tweak tone, color, and contrast is a must. So let's begin. At number five is Lightroom. The price of Lightroom is $9.99 monthly subscription. Lightroom, as we all know, is the king of photo editing, which also happens to include the solid HDR merging feature, which is superior to many standalone HDR editors in the market. Lightroom's tone mapping produces images which are realistic and natural, and its interface is fast and responsive. It supports raw brackets, auto alignment, and ghost removal. Why is it only at number five? Well, it has the least features of all the entries on this list. First, it does not have any HDR-specific controls like the ability to adjust strength, tone compression, or local contrast. It has no HDR presets to speak of, nor does it include any LDR capability, which means it cannot generate any HDR image from a single photo. Last but not the least, it was the only HDR editor on this list which couldn't properly merge my iPhone brackets. I don't know why that is so. Bottom line is Lightroom produces great HDR images, but if you want more creative options and features, you need to look elsewhere. Number four is Affinity Photo. Affinity Photo costs around 50 USD. Just like Lightroom, HDR merging is just one of the many features of its very capable photo editor. Output-wise, Affinity Photo produces great looking images on par with Lightroom. Its interface is easy to understand and very responsive. Like Lightroom, it supports raw brackets, auto alignment, and ghost removal. So why is it ranked higher than Lightroom? It's simply because Affinity allows some creative control over your HDR. While Lightroom doesn't come with any presets, Affinity has four useful presets for changing the look of your HDR from natural to dramatic. While Lightroom provides zero HDR specific sliders, Affinity provides the ability to adjust HDR strength, local contrast, and tone compression. My favorite control is local contrast because it really works well in making an image pop by enhancing all the small details. While Lightroom has no LDR support, Affinity supports LDR for both RAW and JPEG. So are there any disadvantages to Affinity Photo? Well, Affinity Photo's tone mapping, while excellent, to my eyes, its colors are slightly less vibrant and less pleasing than its top-ranked competitors. Also, if you wanted to improve the colors, its HDR interface doesn't come with selective color adjustment, which is the same problem as its RAW editor. So let's compare the HDR results of Affinity Photo and Lightroom. Number three is Easy HDR. Easy HDR is the cheapest offering on this list, priced at only 33 US dollars. I've made a video review on this software and I'll place the link in the description. Easy HDR includes a comprehensive set of pro features that belie its low price. These features include much more presets than Affinity Photo. It also supports raw brackets, tone curves, selective color adjustment, ghost removal, batch processing, lens correction, and noise removal. I would say its most impressive feature would be the quality of its tone mapping, which is notable for its excellent contrast and vivid color. To my eyes, it is better than Affinity Photos. 
The second feature which I really like is its powerful local contrast adjustment, which you can use to target any tonal group, whether it be shadows, highlights, or blacks separately. I love this feature to enhance sunsets by adding more contrast to the sky. In addition, its interface is simple to understand and very responsive. Are there any disadvantages to Easy HDR? Well, yes, I would say it's implementation of tone and color adjustment, which uses curves rather than sliders, makes it more difficult to use and get the results I want. I find myself struggling a bit more than I should when I want to brighten up shadows or adjust color. Bottom line is, if you can't afford the more expensive products in this list, but don't want to sacrifice the quality of your results, Easy HDR is the one to get. Number two is Aurora HDR. Aurora HDR advertises itself as an HDR merging application that uses the power of AI to produce better results. It costs 100 US dollars, which is rather pricey when you consider Easy HDR costs only 33 US dollars. Despite its AI marketing hype, I don't think its tone mapping produces images any better than Easy HDR. So why is it ranked number two? Well, two reasons. First, it has a much more beautiful and intuitive interface than Easy HDR or any other entry on this list. Second, it has more than a total of 20 tools for editing every aspect of your image. Unlike Easy HDR, which relies on tonal curves to adjust color and tone, Aurora HDR has standard sliders which are a lot easier to work with. Parameters you can adjust are a lot, and some might say too many. Most of these tools I will likely never use, like LUT mapping or LUT mapping or polarizing feature. However, its essential tools, those for enhancing tone, color, and local contrast are really the best in my opinion. This is expected because Aurora HDR and Luminar are owned by the same company, and Luminar was my top pick for best raw editor in 2020. So its editing performance is top notch. And when you buy Aurora HDR, you aren't just getting the best HDR editor, you're also getting a fully featured photo editor for editing any image, whether it's HDR or not. Are there any cons to Aurora HDR? Well, aside from its three times higher price than Easy HDR, I would say that the number of tools available can be overwhelming. I'm skeptical that all of these are really needed, and I think some pruning is in order to improve the usability of the app. Also, as I've mentioned before, I don't think its AI contributes to visually better results. In fact, I think its AI makes the interface more sluggish. So let's compare the results of Aurora HDR and Easy HDR. So that brings us to number one, Photomatix Pro. Photomatix Pro costs around 99 US dollars. And while Aurora HDR has the best interface among the bunch, Photomatix Pro is probably the worst. So you're not buying this because of its looks. So why is it at number one, you ask? The main reason is its tone mapping results. In my tests, you have the best chance of getting good looking images with Photomatix out of the box. It seems to be smarter in detecting which areas need to be brightened, which color needs to be enhanced, and it all looks very natural for the most part. Its tone mapping is characterized by properly exposed shadows and highlights and pleasing color. I found myself doing less adjustments on its images and these good results applied for both HDR and LDR. While Aurora HDR has an overwhelming number of controls, Photomatix controls are easier to understand and still produce better creative control with its four tone mapping styles 
with names like Detail Enhanced and Contrast Optimizer. All of these styles have their own distinct look and their own set of sliders. Confusing? Well, yes, and you'll have to do a bit of trial and error to know the effect of each slider. But the amount of sliders are very few and they work really well. I found myself using Contrast Optimizer the most, which for me gives the right balance of color and detail. Photomatix Pro also has pretty much every feature you would expect in a top-notch HDR application like ghost removal, lens correction, noise removal, auto alignment, batch processing, you name it. Finally, Photomatix Pro had the fastest HDR tone mapping and previewing on the list. So if there's any negative to Photomatix Pro, I would say it's its primitive interface and the lack of a local contrast adjustment similar to that of Easy HDR. So let's look at a comparison of Photomatix Pro and Aurora HDR results. So there you have it, the top 5 HDR editors of 2020. Do you agree with this list? Disagree? I'd like to hear from you. Also, did I miss any good HDR editors that deserve to be in this list? Let me know of that in the comments as well. And please, before you go, don't forget to subscribe for more videos. Until the next time, bye!